I've got a few sheets of birch plywood, some one by two poplar, and a really unorganized spot in my garage. Today we're gonna do a very simple built-in bookshelf, but it's not gonna be for books. In case you wanna see what we're building before you actually commit to watching the video, here it is. Nice built-in bookcase. Total cost is gonna run about $160. The material that we're going to be using today is three quarter inch birch plywood. I got the pre-finished stuff for about $47 a sheet. Uh, Home Depot and Lowe's normally don't carry this type of material. I went to a place called Far West Plywood. Uh, it's a company that just deals in plywood products. So take a look in your area. If you've got a place like that, you can normally get better quality plywood a lot cheaper and much better selections. So the width of our unit is gonna be 15 inches wide. I've got my table saw fence set for that dimension and we're ready to cut. One man cut on a table saw with a four by eight sheet is really no fun. What I've got is I've got my, my workbench uh, back here to support it. I've got an out feed table to support it. And let's see what happens. So what I've done is I've cut down my first piece um, to make the 4x8 sheet a little bit more manageable. The piece that I cut is going to be our shelves. This whole cabinet is going to be 15 inches wide. So the shelves and the sides are all going to be 15 inches. I'm also going to have 15 inches of space between my shelves. I told you this was a super simple built-in bookcase. So those numbers make it really easy to, to manage this project. I've marked out all of my layout lines for my shelves. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and dado grooves into these panels for my shelves. And if I'm gonna dado them, I just wanna run one series of dados. So this panel obviously isn't 15 inches, but I'm gonna run the dados through it. Then when I'm done, I'm gonna slice it down uh, in half and it'll give me my 15 inch dimension for both sides of the bookcase. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut our dados with a router. As you probably know, three quarter inch plywood doesn't measure exactly three quarters of an inch. It's actually uh, rated at 18 millimeters, which translates to 11 sixteenths. Now the router bit's cutting at 12 sixteenths. It's gonna give me a sixteenth of an inch gap. May not sound like much, but believe me, when you get this shelf into that dado, it's gonna look pretty bad. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna go ahead and use my half inch straight cutting bit. I'm gonna make one pass and I'm gonna move my fence over 3 16 of an inch, and that'll give me the exact dimension that I'm looking for. They do sell undersized router bits specifically for plywood. I just don't have one for this job, and this is an easy fix. So here's my mark for where I need my dado. I've got my fence set about seven inches away, and that's due to the router base and the attachment for the track saw. And instead of measuring every time to get the proper offset, what I like to do is just make a block. It's like a measuring block. I just line it up to the edge of my um, line and the other part will hit the fence. And then this way, it's a quick, uh, quick and easy setup every single time for multiple cuts. So what I have right now is a half inch dado. I'm gonna measure over 3 16 move my fence over and shave off the remainder of the cut. The router bit's been set to cut exactly halfway through the plywood. With the dados all cut, it's ready to go through the table saw. So what I'm gonna do is build a base for our bookshelf. It's gonna sit between these two walls and the measurement between those two is about 30 inches. Remember the bookshelf is 15 inches deep, but the base is gonna be 12 inches deep because it's gonna have a little toe kick recess in the front. It's gonna be made out of pressure treated lumber because it's sitting on a concrete slab. I've cut my pressure treated lumber to size. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-drill some holes. And using three inch deck screws, I'm just going to fasten everything together. I'm going to check the fit. And we're good. What we're going to do though, 
is I don't want to leave it with this pressure treated front showing. So I'm going to take a piece of quarter inch maple plywood and cover the front and it'll match the cabinets. So what I've done is I've went ahead and grabbed my level and using some shims, I've got some plastic shims in this situation, I went ahead and shimmed the uh, stand, the toe kick, make sure it's level in both directions. And it can use a little bit of a shim back here. Okay. Once it's level, I'm going to go ahead and just screw it to the wall. Toe kick just gets attached with glue, regular carpenter's glue and brads. So what I'm gonna do now is measure for the width of our bookcase. I'm gonna measure in about four different locations because walls are never plumb. I'm gonna take the smallest of those measurements. It looks like it's about 29 and a quarter. Good way to uh, verify that is take 29 and a quarter and just cut it down on a little scrap piece of wood, run it along the walls, make sure that your cabinet's gonna fit. So right now I'm cutting our shelves and one thing that you have to remember is if you want your total cabinet to be 29 inches or whatever width, you gotta subtract out 11 sixteenths on each side for the width of the plywood. So I've got 11 sixteenths times two minus the 29 inches. But then don't forget, we cut in a dado. Our dado is 3 eighths of an inch deep, so I'm gonna have to add that in, basically 3 eighths times 2, 6 eighths or 3 quarter to the overall dimension. So my total shelf uh, dimensions are gonna be 28 and 3 eighths, and that'll give me a 29 inch wide cabinet. So after the shelves are cut, what I'm doing is pre-drilling some holes. I'm using some inch and five eighths drywall screws. And with glue in my dados, I'm attaching all my shelf pieces. So one thing I learned to do is always test fit your cabinet. Um, before I had all the shelves and I decided to push this thing in, make sure it fits because I knew my clearances were gonna be pretty tight. Well, good thing I didn't have all the shelves in or the back in because to get this thing in, I actually had to remove this center shelf. And the reason for that is I've got this recirculating pump right here that sticks out about an inch and a half that just wouldn't let me put the cabinet through. With the shelf out, it let me just squeeze everything in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the rest of the shelves with glue. And I'm going to have to put the cabinet back in through the back side. So if you've got like a really tight space, always double check. Even though you've measured it, this has happened to me before, you always want to make sure that the cabinet carcass fits in there before you fully assemble it. So now that I've got it pulled out just a little bit, I can go ahead and reattach my center shelf. Okay, now that I have the shelf attached, I can go ahead and put the cabinet in place. And once it's in, there's plenty of room because I, I left enough about a quarter of an inch on each side. It was just getting it in that was the problem. First thing I do is I make sure that my cabinet is sitting evenly on the base that we built. Next, I'm gonna check it for level. And it's sitting perfectly level because we leveled out the base. And that all looks good. Now I grab the biggest level that I have and check it for plumb, which is your up and down. And this looks pretty good. So I'm mounting the cabinet with screws to the wall um, into my wall studs 
and I'm doing it right through the dado. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna conceal those screws. Nobody will see them once the shelf's in. It'll make for a nice clean installation. I've cut some quarter inch plywood to use as shims. So I'm gonna just shim it away from the wall when I screw it in. Another thing that I've done is I've cut this uh, piece of scrap wood to the exact dimension of my shelf. And what this will do is it'll help align the cabinet sides when I screw it in um, because this is gonna be my exact shelf width so it won't pull it too far away or push it too far out. It'll be a guide for me when I'm shimming. So right here I've attached my shim. I'm gonna go ahead and drill and countersink a hole. and put in my screw. Check my tolerances. Make sure that shelf is gonna slide nicely and we're good. What I like to do is verify that my shelves fit, especially if I'm building a cabinet in place like this. Now all I'm gonna do is take it out and put glue in my dados and then cut the remaining two shelves. We'll be good to go. So I just pulled the refrigerator out. That gives me access to the back side of this cabinet. Lucky for me, now I just measure for my plywood back and we'll go ahead and cut it. Before I put the cabinet back on, I'm gonna mark the center line of all my shelves. That way, when I go to nail, I'll have uh, a good reference point. Now I'm ready to position our panel in place. So now I've transferred all of my lines to indicate the center of my shelves and just drive some nails in there. So with that cabinet back in place, it's starting to look more like a built-in bookshelf. Next step is to go ahead and trim it out with our face frame. Our face frames are gonna be made out of one by two poplar. I like poplar because it'll blend in well with birch or maple plywoods, and it's relatively inexpensive. Each eight foot piece is about $6. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pre-finish it also because our book uh, case is uh, the pre-finished plywood. So before I put any type of finish on it, I'm going to take 100 grit on a sanding block and lightly sand everything down. What I like to do is we're going to go ahead and break this edge a little bit. So just run it very lightly along all of your edges and all four sides. Sand it down and it'll be ready for staining. After sanding, I'm just going to blow everything off. Now a quick wipe down with the tack cloth. I'm gonna be using a gel stain made by Rockler. It's called Mission Oak Stain. I like the color, works well for me. I'm gonna be using a foam brush to apply it. Let's get started. It's always a good idea to use a wood conditioner before you stain. That way it allows your stain to penetrate more evenly. But you know what, this is the fast and easy bookshelf build. We don't have time for it. Now actually in reality, this uh, gel stain gives me really good coverage. I've used it on a couple other projects and even without a conditioner, it does a really good job of, of giving me even coverage. What I'm doing on this particular project is just brushing it on and leaving it on. Well, with stains, you can go ahead and brush them on and take them off with a rag. It can um, help you control the color. But this particular project, I wanted it a bit darker and just leaving it on looked pretty good. I finished applying the stain. Now I'm just gonna let everything dry for about four hours. Next step is to cut and install the face frame. I'm just going to apply wood glue to the cabinet and then install our face frames.
Now normally what I would do is I would go ahead and build my frame and pocket screw it together. But in this situation, it's just gonna to be too tight to get it installed. And my walls are really, you know, it's got, this one's got a big bow in it. So the easiest thing to do and the thing that'll look the best is just screw and nail in these face frames. Now that we've got our two long pieces up, all I have to do is cut six of the pieces that go across the rails. So it's always better to sneak up on your cut. I want this fitting really tight. So I'll cut it maybe 30 seconds of an inch too big and then make just one more cut to dial it in. Uh, another thing that I do is I always watch um, where my saw cuts the roughest. With mine, it's against the back of the fence. So you can see I get just a little bit of tear out there. I make sure that's against the back of the cabinet and it won't be visible. So right about now is when you really start appreciating the fact that you got pre-finished plywood and you pre-finished your face frames ahead of time. Our cabinet's almost done. Last thing we're gonna do is use a little bit of wood filler. Actually got wood putty here. And we're gonna go ahead and fill up all these nail holes. A little bit of stain over the putty and it'll blend in perfectly. Total time to build this bookcase, about eight hours. Material costs were 160. I had two sheets of three quarter inch pre-finished plywood, $100 for that. The one sheet of quarter inch pre-finished plywood was about $26. I had four pieces of one by two by eight foot long poplar boards at $26 for all four, and a little bit of stain. So there you have it, built-in bookcase, easy and relatively cheap.